Lord, God bless you. This is your fitting the gospel street pastor, preacher Warren, Pastor Warren. Uh, you can call me Brother Warren. Don't make a difference. I'm not in the titles. That's the title God has given me. Praise the Lord. I believe in bearing fruits. Uh, I thank God for these prayer requests that have went up, up before the Lord for me. Um, I can feel the prayers taking effect. I've called uh, Prophetess Caroline up for prayer and she prayed. Uh, you anointed me last week concerning my toothache. I can feel the prayers. Also, Sister Daphne, these are my prayer warriors. Uh, Michael Sterrett, I'm Diane Shepherd. I can feel the prayers. It's taking effect. Keep praying. Ari, I got your message here on YouTube. That God had me pray for you, and you say you're getting a job interview today. But God is a prayer answering God. Praise God that when the saints of God begin to pray, and we pray one for another, the Lord will have his way. Amen. That's why it's good to pray one for another, because we need prayer. Continue to pray for your pastor, as your pastor pray for you. Amen. The pastor and his wife, we pray for them. Amen. And God will begin to work miracles, signs and wonders. So I appreciate the prayers of the righteous. It helps. It helps. Amen. God is a prayer answering God. I give God all the glory. Praise God for all the things he have done and the things that he's going to do. And the things he's already is doing even right now while we are speaking. I believe God is breaking yokes. It may not look like it in the natural world, but I believe he's breaking yokes. I talked to a young man the other day named Musa, which means Moses. We had a nice conversation. He said he's inspired by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It feels good when I can inspire other men especially the young men, because uh, especially being a black African-American man, we have it very difficult in this world, in this racist world that we're living in. That's why I want to let you know that uh, you're not a nigger, you are a winner. Come on, tell somebody. Tell your black brother and sister, you're not a nigger, you are a winner. Amen. When you love each other, that make you a winner. When you kill each other, you're not a winner. But when you love each other, that make you a winner. When you love God, you obey God. That makes you a winner. Because he said, thanks be to God which gives us the victory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To my white brothers out there. To my Indian brothers out there. To my Spanish brothers out there. To my African Asian brothers out there and sisters. We all flammy in the Lord and we love the Lord. And now we can love one another. As Christ has loved us. And Jesus said, by this all men will know you by disciples if you have loved one for another. Uh, today I want to talk about love today. Praise God. We let the talk about love. We know about love, love, love. I know Tina Turner had a song a long time ago. What's love got to do with it, got to do with it? I know Tina Turner was singing about something else, but I want to talk about the love of God. Love. I want to talk about marriage. Is marriage for everyone? Um, the scripture came to me right here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. I'll teach you today, just talk. Right in front of the Roman Catholic Church right now, praise God. I want to talk about marriage. Not two same-sex marriage. I'm not talking about that. I don't believe in that. Even though the government may believe in it. White House may believe in it. But I don't believe in it because God don't believe in it. Praise God. Because nowhere in the Word of God where you have seen two same-sex marriage in the Bible. God is already God has always married a man to a woman he married he gave a woman to a man all in the bible you never seen any of the men of god who was married in the bible you never seen them married to a man okay you never seen that you're not trying to put you down but it's true i didn't see abraham in the bible married to abram abraham was married to sarah sarah was married to abraham Amen. You had Rachel, you had Jacob, praise God. You had, look at this, Joseph and Mary. Look at that, Joseph and Mary. Jesus had a mother and a father. It wasn't Mary and Magdalene. God married Mary and Joseph. They was the parents of Jesus Christ. It's all in the Bible. 
when, when the Bible said they knew each other, that was referring to a man and a woman who got married. And when the Bible said they knew each other, would that mean they made love? And that's how they birthed children. That's why he told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. You know, he didn't tell Adam and Eve. Or rather, he did tell Adam and Eve. He did not tell Adam and Reeve. I know you're all used to hearing Adam and Steve, but let's say something new. There are men named Reeve. I know they had Christopher Reeve, but I'm not talking about Christopher Reeve. God did not marry Adam and Reeve. Many people say Steve. God did not marry Eve and Eva, but he married Adam and Eve himself in the Garden of Eden. Uh, the first ministry on earth was marriage. That's beautiful. They didn't have a wedding in the Garden of Eden. God took the dust, created man, and breathed into his nostrils. And the Bible said in Genesis that man became a living, what, soul. But after a while, even though God and Adam had a great relationship, God has the agape love. It's not the same kind of love that we have in the marriage. The agape love that came from God is holy. It's not sexual, it's not lustful, it's not romantic, it's a different kind of love. He loves us because we are his creation. He's our heavenly father. You understand? So even though Adam had a good relationship with God, but God said it's not good for man to be alone. So God gave man a wife. Praise God. And not a knife. He gave man a wife. Even though Eve was deceived by the serpent, hard-headed and did just what God told her and Adam not to do. He deceived Adam. We know the story. But God told Adam and need to be fruitful and multiply. So all in the Bible, God joined men and women together. He never joined a women, he never joined two women together. God never joined two men together. Okay, all in the Bible. God joined a man and a woman together. God ordained marriages. Amen. It's wonderful when children have a mother and a father. God bless you. That's a wonderful thing. This is how we was birthed. Even you Solomites, God loves you. But you Solomites, God wants to make you right. And you no longer could be a, will be a Solomite when you let the Lord make you right. Jesus loved gays, but he does not love the ways. Same way God loves those of us who are straight, but he hates when we hate. You might have got molested or raped or sexually abused. You're the one that God is going to use. He can heal you. Because your lesbian lover can hurt you too. Your gay lover can cheat on you too. But God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. So all in the Bible. God has ordained men and women together to get married. When God ordained, uh, when God married Adam and Eve, and not Adam and Steve or even Eva, there was a wedding right there. The first ministry was marriage. Praise God. When a man loves his wife, when the wife loves her husband, and then he ordained them to have children. That's why he told them to be fruitful and multiply. So now we're gonna talk about marriage. This is why Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse four, he said, marriage is honorable in all. We're gonna talk about marriage. I like to see marriages work. I like to see God bless marriages. Praise God. He said, marriage is honorable in all. And this is what the Bible said now. I'm not talking to those of you who are eunuchs. We're going to talk about eunuchs too. Eunuchs are people who don't want to get married. You just totally sold out to God. And that's your choice. That's a beautiful thing. But there's those who need to be married. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean you don't love Jesus. But this, this is why Apostle Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7 and go to verse number 9. Even though Paul said it's better that you be as me, single but that was but that's his own that was his own feeling god did not command him to tell the church to stay single 
Okay? I also Apostle Paul would never have said that it's better to marry than to burn in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 9. And if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse number 2, Apostle Paul also said, let every man have his own wife. Hello, somebody. He didn't say another man's wife. Uh, I, most, most of the time I preach this. Then he going to say, let every woman have her own husband uh, to avoid fornication. So let's get into Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 4. And then we'll get back into 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. It said marriage is honorable and all. Not talking about two men, two women. It's talking about marriage is honorable and all when a man and a woman get married. If, it, if it's ordained by God, as long as you don't marry a wolf in sheep clothing, that's not honorable. If you marry someone abusive, if you marry a witch who needs to switch from being a witch, uh-oh, and turn to Jesus, and they don't want to turn from their wicked ways, then you unequally yoked. Then that marriage is not honorable in the sight of God. Marriage is only honorable when God joined together because the Bible said, who the Lord joined together, let no man put his son there. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty deep. They say, well, who the Lord joined together, let no man put his son there. So that means God ordains people to be together. Now, if you were somebody who's a wolf in sheep clothing, God did not ordain you to marry that man who's abusive, our woman. Okay? Because the Bible said that Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. So let's go back to the word of God. Here we go, go on to say, it said marriage is honorable in all. That's only if God ordained the marriage. Here we go. Let's go back to it again. Uh, praise God. It said marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled, but the homongers and adulterers God would judge. So it says honorable and all, but homongers and adulterers, God will judge. Uh, Paul Unique's view is that unmarried Christians can serve without the troubles that come with even the best marriages. That's why Paul said it's better to remain like me, single. Talk about himself. This was not a commandment from God to Apostle Paul to get to the church, not to get married. He was just stating his opinion. Paul's unique personal view is that unmarried Christians can serve without the troubles that come with even the best marriages. They can remain fully focused on living for Christ. That is neither a command, as we said, don't forget that, that is neither a command. See, he's not saying, he, he, did, he did not command the church not to get married. This is just Paul speaking from his own spirit. Praise God. You keep reading further. For those of you who talk about, well, God just wants you all to himself. And it's not meant for you to get married. And that's not what the Bible says. Praise God. It says, Paul, unique's personal view is that unmarried Christians can serve without the troubles that come even in the best marriages. Every marriage has ups and downs. Every marriage has trouble. Praise God. Troubles. They can remain fully focused on living for Christ. That is neither a command nor a judgment binding on anyone. So he's not saying don't get married. He's just saying that there's going to be troubles in marriages. But if you meant to get married, God would give you the right one in your life. That's why he says it's not good for man to be alone. But it's best to pray. Because you do not want to be unequally yoked with someone who... It's not on one accord with you because the Bible also said can two walk together except they be agreed. You can't put a wolf with a sheep because a wolf will try to devour the sheep. You can't put a cat with a dog. <laughs> you can't put a saint with an ain't. If you do, you're not going to get along unless the ain't want to become a saint. Your husband may be an ain't who's not a saint. Your wife may, may be an ain't that's not a saint. We all was ain'ts at one time, <laughs> ain't a saint, and God made us a saint. So now they want to become a saint because they're getting saved through your life, then that's a good thing that y'all can be on one accord. Praise God. But if you're unequally yoked, there's going to be problems. And even when you 
are both saved and not unequally yoked, it's still going to be ups and downs because we all have our ups and downs. Praise God. Now let's talk about eunuchs. Before I go talk about the eunuch, now let's go back and do I just want to teach today. I just want to say teach, Holy Ghost. Let's go in the Word of God again. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, Apostle Paul talks about marriage. Okay, let's see what Apostle Paul says here about marriage. He said, a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes. But if, but he must belong to the Lord. Okay. This Apostle Paul said, who was the Apostle of the church. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. Hmm. Well, how would Apostle Paul say that if God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply? Well, he was talking about fornication. Fornication is sex before marriage. Okay? Now, you'll never find the word sex in the Bible. Uh, the Bible said they, they knew each other, which means they made love. Okay? Apostle Paul was referring to people who are fornicating. That's what he's talking about. That's why when the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, uh, that marriage is honorable and all, and the bed is undefiled, but homongers, see, are so fornicators, and adulterers God would judge. Now that makes sense why Apostle Paul said, let every man have his own wife. Not another man's wife. You do that, that's adultery. Let every woman have her own husband. Not another woman's husband. If you do that, that's adultery. Read the book of Romans, chapter number seven, you get a chance to. Praise God. So now, uh, Apostle Paul says here, the commandment given by God to Apostle Paul to write, just to the church, Ecclesia. A woman is, uh, no, I already read that already. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. I'm talking about fornication, that's what he meant. But because of the temptation to sexual, to sexual. So he says, verse nine, it's better to marry than to burn. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse nine. But if they cannot contain, which means if they can't, if you cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Your flesh is acting up. Hormones are there. You don't necessarily mean you're lusting. Is that? It's only nature to have an attraction for the opposite sex. It's not nature by God for a woman to have an attraction for another woman. That spirit came from the devil. That didn't come from God. Regardless of what the government say, what the God say. God not gonna change his word just because the government says it's okay. The rainbow do not represent homo. The rainbow is holy, not homo. Praise God because homo is not holy. It's not hate speech, this is true speech. Understand? So what he's saying is that, yes, your homo is going to function. You're going to see a beautiful woman or a handsome man. You're going to have those desires. That's only nature. It doesn't necessarily mean it's lust. It's that your, is that your body desires to make love. Your desire, your body desires to be um, in love making with a man or a woman so you can have, so you can produce, have children and produce children. That's how we got here. That's nature. God put that there. So Apostle Paul said, if you cannot contain, it's better to marry than to burn, rather than being burning in your flesh. Now, don't just only get married for sex, but marry because you love each other. Now the sex will be effective. Not just having sex, just to be having sex. Because if you don't really love each other, then it just be a one night stand or you'll be cheating on each other after you have sex. You know, a man and a woman can give you good sex and not give you respect because they don't really love you. They just want the sex. They just in love with your physical. It doesn't mean they're in love with you. Love go beyond the physical. 
Nice to have the physical attraction for each other, but don't just only get married just to only have sex. It's gonna take love to keep a marriage going. I know many people who say it's gonna take money also to keep a marriage going. True. Rent gotta be paid, bills gotta be paid, rent is going up. Oh yeah. Money, 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 money. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Okay, you know, remember that song back in the 70s? But don't worship money, but we need money. But don't worship it. When you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. That he will provide because he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi, God our provider. So don't just get married just only just to have sex. Making love come with that. But really, really love God first. And then you love your wife, you love your husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church, love your husbands, and don't be a gold digger who wants to push the trigger. Love your wife, don't be abusive on your wife or women. Do not provoke your husbands to anger. If your husband tells you, honey, I don't want to argue, and you keep right on arguing and arguing and arguing, now he got to walk away to keep peace. Amen, somebody. You should take that. You should learn how to keep peace by saying, you know what? Let's just keep the peace right now and let's pray. Some men don't come home because you know as soon as you put the key in the door, you're going to want to start a fight with him. So he stays out the house. Iron is supposed to shop in iron. We can love each other. So you got to make sure that you love one another. And then when you make love, then the love is effective. It's not just sex, 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 sex. And then you make having all these children and then y'all can't get along because you really don't love each other. So it says it's better to marry than to burn. Praise God. We're talking about natural marriage now. When you get married to Jesus physically, that's something spiritually. There's a difference between a wedding and a marriage. A wedding lasts for one day. It is a ceremony to prepare you for marriage. Marriage is honorable, and the bed is undefiled, and the homework is an adultery, is God with judge. Marriage is supposed to last for a lifetime. A wedding lasts for one day. It's a ceremony. You get ready for your big day, your big wedding day. You have your big Cinderella wedding. Now, it makes no sense to have a Cinderella wedding, and you're marrying a man that you don't love. It's just sex. That's it. And the love is not there. It's just lust. That's going to be a problem then, because... He's having a, if you're having a bridal shower, and he's having a bachelor party, and he's having all these women strippers coming to the bachelor party, uh-oh, preach Holy Ghost, don't turn that YouTube down. If you don't really love your wife, and you got some woman stripper putting her behind all in your face and giving you lap dances, you being a man, after a while, you're going to start feeling that lust coming on because you're still a man. That's why I don't feel Christians should have women strippers coming to the bachelor party. Our male strippers coming to your bridal party. The only one who should be stripping for you is your future wife and your future husband. Do not give the devil room to tempt you. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. If you really don't love each other, you're not going to be faithful to each other. Because, first of all, your love for God and your love you have for your wife and husband will give you strength not the cheat. Now marriage is not going to stop temptation. A lot of women don't care if you married. Many men don't care if you married. And there's those who do care. They're very respectful. There's those who are just lustful. The Delilah's and Jezebel's part of his wives. You got those men who don't care. They're just lustful. They don't care if you're married. They have no respect. And this is why things do not go right in their life because they're always trying to take someone else's wife uh, she always trying to take someone else's husband, someone who do not belong to her. That's why things don't go right in their life and they ask for prayer. Preacher Warren, can you pray for me? I'm going through bad times. Yeah, you brought it upon yourself because you lusting after another man's wife, another woman's husband, and you won't do right. If you do right, then God will bless. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. You reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. So we really love each other and you love God together. Then the marriage can work. Because the marriage who pray together will stay together because God is ahead of the marriage. Now God can bless your children. Now you can have church in the house. Y'all can pray together as a family because really church starts in your house before you actually go to the church building. 
It's deep, isn't it? Your body become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body become the church. Now you can teach your children about God. And not how to watch pornography, our Grand Theft Auto, I teach them how to be Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Our Harry Potter, that stuff is demonic. Teach them about God, train up a child in the way they should go. So when they depart, or when they grow old rather, they will not depart from it. Because now you instilled God in them. You instilled the word of God in them already. You instilled the Bible in them already. And they won't forget. Even if they go out into the world, but when they begin to go through something, whatever you taught your children will come back to their memory. And they may say, I need to go back to church. I need to go back to the altar. I need to serve God again. I backslid. I want to front slide and not backslide. I'm coming back to you, Jesus. I'm going to be like the prodigal son. Praise God, who left his father's house, but he came back. And his father, his father had open arms to embrace him with love. So I'm coming back home, God. Because you, cause now you done instill God in them at an early age. You understand? Praise God for the Prince of Peace. In case your daughter is stripping somewhere in the club and became a prostitute. But God is still watching over her. Angels are watching over her because you prayed over your children. So now the devil cannot kill your daughter or your son, even when they're in the world, because God has a hedge of protection around them. Goodness and mercy will follow you and your children all the days of your life because the prayers of the righteous prevail as much. Prevail as much. Prayers work. When the saints of God begin to pray, the Lord will have his way. Prayers work. It may not seem like it's working, but it'll work. When you pray in the beauty of holiness. Amen. I sense God's angel here right now. We praise God for God's angel that's here in the midst. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. We worship God in the spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. According to St. John chapter 4, where Jesus told the woman at the well. So we're talking about marriages. What did Jesus say about the eunuchs? Talk about eunuchs. I know I was told a long time ago, oh, preacher Juan, you're not meant to get married. You're just meant to be by yourself. That ain't what the Lord told me. Because I get feelings. Now. I get desires. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I'm anointed. Yeah, but I get desires, you know, of wanting to make love with, with wife. Praise God. It don't mean you're in the flesh. That's just a normal thing. How you think we got here? You didn't get here by just dropping out the sky or some bird carrying you in some basket and just drop the baby in uh, your father's lap. But you got here because your parents made love. I don't care how deep they act, how spiritual and holy, they got it on. None of our business, but they got it on. Some of y'all have 10, 13 children. You obviously got it on because that's what God has ordained. Praise God. So there's those who need to get married because you need a companion. That's why he said it's not good for man to be alone. That's why God gave man a wife and not a knife. So those of you in the church that's trying to tell people that you're not supposed to get married, that's wrong. God has ordained marriage. This is in the Bible. Look at Mary and Joseph. They were the parents of Jesus. They was married. So you got these churches with these nuns in the Catholic church saying, I don't want to get married and you know you're burning in your flesh. I'm just so out to Jesus. Well, if you are, that's a good thing. But then why are you sneaking out the church and you going to parties late at night to find a man in the club somewhere and now you got short mini dresses and breasts out. And now you weren't dressing that way up in the Catholic church. You're dressing the holy in the Catholic church. Why are you doing this? Because you know you want a man. Come on, let's be honest. You know you want a woman in your life. So now, if you want somebody, just be honest. Lord, I want to get married. Now, if you're a eunuch, what did Jesus say about the eunuchs? Talk about the eunuch, what Jesus said about that. In the Bible, Jesus said that there are three types of eunuchs. Eunuch is spelled E U N U. C H S. Those born eunuchs, those made eunuchs. Oh, this D. They're those who are born eunuchs. Now that's why you don't have a desire to want to get married. You find yourself single a lot. Even when you try to get married, or you are engaged to be married, it doesn't last. Maybe you were born eunuch. Maybe just 
Maybe you're just not marriage material. You're a good woman or a good man, but you're just not marriage material. You just don't have the desire to get married. That's not bad. Maybe you're born to be a eunuch. That's what Jesus said now. He said there's those, there are three types of eunuchs. See, I didn't know this until I just read it. Jesus said this. Those who are born eunuchs. Those made eunuchs by others. And that's deep. Those who made eunuchs. Some of y'all hang, many of y'all hang around mothers in the church. They're not married. Hey, that may be your spiritual mother and she may tell you that you're not meant to get married. God just wants you all to himself. And, and you know you want somebody in your life. You know you want to get married. But you're around a lot of mothers in the church uh, who tell you you're not meant to get married. Just pray, just fast, and love the Lord. What they're saying to you is not wrong, but the other part when they say you're not meant to get married, well, how do, how do they know that? If you're not meant to get married, then God will tell you that. He'll give you a peace. Praise God. Because if you're flesh is acting up and your hormones is acting up and you want to make love with a woman or a man, then that must mean you're meant to get married. That's why Apostle Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. So don't let nobody control your life now. Many of you know you want to get married and some of y'all been sitting in church 30 some years, don't have a husband yet or a man yet because you're allowing these your spiritual mothers to tell you you're meant to be by yourself and to be single. Many of you women got an all women's church. You know how they sit no men in there. You may see a couple of Solomites in there and a couple of dykes up in there and a couple of bull daggers and butchers. But you know how they sit no men up in there. And the men who are there, they already take it. And then the, then the woman pastor telling the women, God don't want you to have nobody. He just wants you all to himself. Because now the woman pastor is a dyke and she wants you for herself. So you got to be careful with that. That's an Amazon church. Who don't believe in marriages. And you got a lot of men churches who are male chauvinists. They don't believe that a man should be married to a woman. Well, God did not call a man to be faggot. He's not trying to make, see, if, a, if your pastor trying to make you a homo, <laughs> God wants you to have the Holy Ghost, not a homo ghost. And talking about, well, Lord don't want you to have a wife. He just wants you all to himself. And just, it's just about ministry, 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 ministry. Well, if the Lord told him that, the Lord would tell you that. And here you know in your flesh that you want somebody. You're lonely. You need a companion. You need a help me. Not to make her maid, but you need a help me. Amen. You need a help mate. Someone to love you. You love her back. Because marriage was the first ministry on earth. Many of you are being influenced to become a eunuch. So then you become a eunuch because someone else told you you should be a eunuch. It doesn't mean it was your choice. So Jesus said here, there are three types of eunuchs. Those born eunuchs, those, now those who are born to be a eunuch. They're not going through struggles in their flesh. Okay, it doesn't mean you're a lesbian. That doesn't mean you're a solomite. It just means you just don't want to get married. That's why when men give you flowers, you just have no interest. Well, with an average woman who want to get married and love romance, she will love flowers. All women love flowers. If you don't love, love a man to give you flowers out of romance, then maybe you may be a eunuch. Okay? If you're not liking women, praise God, and you're not in that lifestyle, that means you are born eunuch. So we're not going to fault you because you don't want to get married. Maybe you just sold out to God. It's a beautiful thing. So Jesus said there are three types of eunuchs. Those born eunuchs, those made eunuchs by others. I was talking about that. And those who make themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. So there's those who don't get married. They get sold out to God. They get serving Jesus. They born, So they made themselves eunuchs for God. Okay? So I believe that's what they talk about the nuns. Alam, they don't get married. Um, I guess they want to be like a Mother Teresa or something like that. I don't know whether Mother Teresa was really saved or not. I heard some things about her too. But that's another story. I hope she made it in. But there are a lot of you Catholics, uh, as well as in the Pentecostal churches as well. Many of you are priests. Now, what I don't understand, if you say you sold out to God, why many of you priests are lusting after little boys? Something wrong. God didn't call the priest to lust after little boys. 
God did not call a, a nun to lust after little girls and sexually abuse them. Then you're not a real nun or a real priest. Now, come on. That's why God said in the book of I, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Keep going. Come in you quote that scripture. And that's all you quote. Keep, keep reading. It said because they have rejected knowledge. They didn't want the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. That's what Jesus said. In St. John chapter 8 verse 32. Jesus said I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. St. John chapter 14 verse 6. Go back to Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. He said my people, my people. He didn't say the devil's people. He said my people. It's about God's people. Many of you saints, don't become an ain't after you go. Don't become an ain't after you became a saint. Don't backslide, front slide. He said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? They rejected knowledge. Then he go on to say, and so I will reject you. And I want God to reject me for being priest to me. For being priest to me. Uh, why? You kept on child abusing, sexually abusing little children. Blue That's why God rejected you. And then he going to say, I will forget about your children. Now, you don't want God to forget about your children because that means if you birth children, then that wicked spirit fell on your children and the children will come out just as wicked as the parent. That's why God said, I will reject them. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. So if you say you sell out to God, if you say you are none of a priest, then why are you lusting at the little girls? Why are you sexually abusing little boys in the churches? That's not a real nun. That's not a real priest. That's a devil's priest. That's the devil's nun. Many of you got molested by a priest, a woman priest, a lesbian priest, and that's why you came out lesbian. It's not your fault. That's why Jesus said, I love you, and I'm going to heal you. Because that demon being transferred by the lesbian priest who sexually abused you when you was a girl, now it makes you to become a lesbian, and that's why you're drawing the women. That's why many of you are drawing the men. And that's why Jesus said, I come to heal your broken heart. Okay? So, eunuchs are just people who don't have a desire to get married. You just, you just sold out to God. That's a beautiful thing. You're just working for the Lord. Now, I know me, I'm not a eunuch. I got a lot of romance in me. I even wrote love songs. The Bible talks about romance in the Bible in the Song of Solomon. God has ordained romance. Romance is for marriages. It's good when you romantic with your wife. It's good when you romantic with your man. Praise God for the Prince of Peace who's your husband and your wife. Song of Solomon is deep, y'all. That's why a lot of preachers don't preach about Song of Solomon. It goes deep. <laughs> yeah, it goes deep. Talk about how how he eats her and how he eats her and all that. I don't have to go that way right now, but one day I'll talk about the song. But let's talk about it right now. Song of Solomon. What you do in your bed is your business between you and your wife. That's why he said marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. But homeworks and adultery is God with judge. Song of Solomon talks about romance. Go to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. The verse 7. We're going to go to talk about that. But before I go any further, there are witches. It may have been your mother or your father. It might have been your background who made a covenant with the devil. And there are witches in the church like that who do not want to see. You don't want to see your son get married. You don't want to see your daughter get married. And you wonder why you may have a hard time staying married. Are you having marriage problems? Because... Somebody put a curse out in your family that you won't be happily married. That's evil because God do want you to be happily married. So many people are doing soul traveling at night. You go to actual body, meeting up with other witches, three o'clock in the morning time. Then the head witch will tell you where well, if you want power in the church, outside the church, you have to sacrifice somebody in your family. There's different kinds of sacrifices. They do sacrifices like that in Hollywood. Get deep now. So they preach Holy Ghost, teach Holy Ghost. Even Con West even admitted that he sacrificed his mother. The Illuminati's told him to do that. Fame and fortune. And go on and on. I believe Mariah Carey. I believe she sacrificed her mother and sister. 
Her mother uh, was a devil worshiper and doing rituals, okay? But the sister was sacrificed and she was homeless and on drugs. I believe they used the sister as a sacrifice to boost up Mar uh, Mariah Carey's career. And the mother was along with it against her own daughter, the other daughter, not against Mariah Carey because the mother was on Mariah Carey's side, but they was coming against and fighting against the sister who just passed away. I believe it was used as an Illuminati sacrifice. It wouldn't surprise me if the other sister who was going through something may have the heaven and the mother went to hell. A lot of times they're doing a lot of rituals. A lot of witches, rituals is going on. That's why you have a hard time getting married. Because there have been a curse been put upon you. Jesus can break that curse. Jesus can break that curse. You must say to yourself, they cannot curse who God has blessed. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No matter what a witch doctor try to put a curse on you, if you got the hags of God around you, that curse cannot work. Why? Because angels are around you. He said, goodness and mercy will fall. Amen. God bless you all today. You're blessed. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Praise God for the women of God. we praising God today. Oh, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Many of you are wrestling with a covenant. Somebody in your family who's a Freemason or Eastern star who worship Balfamet or, or doing devil worship, they even go to church. They look like holy mothers in the church or holy fathers. And some of them are nothing but witches and warlocks who want to use you as a sacrifice to promote their power. That goes on in Africa. That goes on here in America. And so what they did, they prayed up something that your marriage won't work or you will never have romance in your life. And now you wonder why you cannot keep a wife or you cannot keep a husband because somebody in your family was a witch who tried to put a curse on you and they don't want to see you happy in your marriage. You are meant to be happy in your marriage. You are meant to be loved. You are meant to be happy. Tell yourself, I'm meant to be happy. Say you are too blessed to be stressed. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So speak blessings upon yourself. Hallelujah. You've got to lay hands on yourself. You've got to look yourself in the mirror. And say, thanks be the God which gives me the victory. I, I feel like preaching right now. To my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. I feel the Holy Ghost right now to get rid of that word curse. Praise the Lord. I know I was wrestling with a word curse. Praise God. I love my parent, but she. Praise God and, and, and God bless her. I always loved my mother. She raised us. But she spoke so negative. I remember she told the Lord, she said, she said she told God she don't want no grandchildren. And I was really surprised she told God that. I said, why would a parent would not want us to get married and have grand and have children? That's a wonderful thing. She said she told God, I don't want no grandchildren. Just kept speaking negative. <coughs> And I said, Mom, why would you say that? It was years ago. You can't make decisions for us. When I get married, I want children. I told the Lord, I don't want no grandchildren. Now, maybe she didn't realize, maybe she did not realize that was witchcraft. Maybe in her mind, it was not witchcraft, but it was. Because right there, she spoke negative. She was speaking word curses over her children, over my siblings. And look, none of my brothers and sisters have children. None of them have children. And then my other two sisters had fry boys. Their stomachs was attacked by the enemy. Is that normal? So I had to pray over their wounds. Why? That was a word curse that was being spoken. That when someone get involved with a woman, her word curse would follow us, her children. So even though we were saved, I had to rebuke that word curse and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I am meant to be married. I am meant to be happy in marriage. Not meant to have any nightmares. Not meant to have the vision. I believe in togetherness, where my aunt is more power, uh, more positive. My aunt believes in marriages and togetherness. And look, and look, her, her son, who's my cousin, Ernest, got blessed in his relationship because he has a positive mother and father so parents do not speak word curses over your children 
Speak blessings over your children. Speak life over your children so that God can bless your children. So they won't have to wrestle with a word curse. But now they have positivity, positive spirits following them. So I had to get rid of this word curse. I even asked my mother years ago not to put it down, to pray for her. I love her. I just want to share my experiences. I said, Mom, do you made a pact with the devil? I said, Mom, do you make a covenant with the devil and you, and that's why my brother been having, my brother's wife been having miscarriages like that and they, they have a hard time having children. I said, I said, this is not normal. I said, do you make a covenant with the devil? I said, do you make a pact with the devil? And did you make a covenant? And she got mad. She said, I didn't, she said, I didn't make no covenant with the devil. I didn't, no, no, I said, something is wrong. I said, somebody made a covenant with the devil. I want to make a covenant with Jesus, not with the devil. Hollywood had made a pact with the devil. And there's a lot of people in church who are making the pact with the devil. So now you're wrestling with all these curses in your life. Wonder why your marriage is just not working out because somebody in your family has prayed a curse over your marriage, but to the devil, you a liar. We're going to be blessed. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. It's in the name of Jesus, we're going to be blessed. You got to lay hands on yourself. Do not let... Do not receive any word curses over your life. So I'm going to be happy. I'm not going, to, so all that is demonic activity. So I'm not going to be a warlock like them. I'm not going to be a witch like them. I don't want to be a mason because they were masons, the Eastern stars, because they was worshiping the false god, Jabalon and Balfamet. I want to worship Jesus all the way. Uh, I want to put God first. Have you erased them word curses? Tell someone. You are happy, to, you are meant to be happy in marriage. Tell yourself, you are meant to be happy in your marriage. You are meant to be happy in your marriage. Say, I am meant to be happy in marriages. Praise God. That you will have no miscarriages. That you will have no fry boys. There will be no division, but be togetherness. It's a generational curse. Praise God. That must be broken. Praise God. Not only broken, but destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon talks about romance. God ordained romance for marriage. Let's go to the book of Song of Solomon. It's deep, y'all. Here it is. Song of Solomon. Well, this is deep. <laughs> I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. While the book of Song of Solomon talks about romance. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Let's go to the book of Song of Solomon. It talks about a romance. Romance was ordained by God. Song of Solomon is deep, y'all. The Song of Song, the Song of Song, which is Solomon's. Oh, now, now this is deep. The Song of Solomon, chapter one, talks about romance. A lot of preachers don't talk about this because Song of Solomon get deep. So what you do in your bed between you and your wife is your business. Praise God. The Song of Song, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Verse two: Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Wow, for thy love is better than wine, because of the Savior. Um, now I'm sounding like Barry White now. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Because of the Savior of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Verse 4, you should draw me. We will run after thee. The king hath brought me into the chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Oh, look at this, verse 5. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, and as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me, because I am black. Because the sun have looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me. They may be the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Tell me, O thou, whom my soul lovest, where thou feedest, where thou makest my flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turns aside by the flocks of thy companions? 
Now we go further, we go deep. It's deep right here. Oh, here it is. We will make the borders of gold with stir of silver. While the king sitteth at his table, my spike nord sendeth forth the smell thereof. A bundle of myrrh is my well, it is well beloved unto me. It is, he said, grave it is though. He said, shall lie all night between my breasts. So the Song of Solomon talks about romance. Romance was ordained by God. God ordained marriages. But don't get involved with the one that's going to abuse you now. If he's abusive, drop that zero to God to give you a hero. Or praise God. If she's abusive, drop that zero to God to give you a hero. And your hero is Jesus Christ. And he'll give you someone who loves you. Here it is. He talked about breasts up in here. This is deep. I see why a lot of preachers don't preach about this in the pulpit. Say, oh, he preaching lustful, but it's in the Bible. It was clean. Well, well, well he had a thousand wives, 700 concubines and 300 wives. No, no, 300 wives and 700 concubines all together. That's a thousand witches. He had the wrong wives. He had witches who were idol worshippers who turned his heart away from God, according to 1 Kings chapter 11. But here's Solomon, who was the richest and wisest king of Israel, who was a son of David, who built Solomon's temple. We're talking real love here. Oh my God. He was getting deep here. Verse 13. A bundle of myrrh is my well beloved unto me. He shall lie all night between my breasts. Well, preacher, why are you in the flesh? Now, I'm just reading what's in the word here. The blood of Jesus. No, don't plead the blood on me. I'm just reading what's in the word. <laughs> Bless you. Behold, thou art fair, which means you're handsome, you're beautiful. My beloved, yea, pleasant, also our bed is green. The beam of our house, our cedar, and our raptors of fur. Now you keep reading y'all in this, this whole chapter, it gets deep. Certain parts talking about how he was eating her and all this type of stuff. I don't have to get real graphic right now to keep it respectful. But romance is in the Bible. Praise God, that's only for those who are married. So what you do in your bed is your business. Now all this having the face mask and leather boots and looking like Catwoman and you you know you you hanging the man from are uh, you got the man chained up in handcuffs <laughs> oh my lord that's scary to me bro now 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 that, that that's that's demonic right now now some things in the bed is demonic okay that's 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 demonic sex there god ain't talking about you wearing some leather boots and Dressing like Catwoman got a whip, shh. And then you want to handcuff that man to a bedroom, man. You better be careful. Because there's no telling what be, might, be, might be running through her mind. She might get flashbacks when a man beat her up. <laughs> she got that whip. Got her leather boots like Kerry Washington. She wild. Going, and she got the whip. And she got you all handcuffed to her bed. Remember that movie, Death by Temptation? Now, you don't want to be dealing with something like that because she might be a sucky bus. Uh-oh, preach Holy Ghost. Or uh, a she-demon. Or uh, he might be an inky bus. She might get flashbacks when men hurted her and abused her. And she getting all them flashbacks and then she getting enraged and angry. And here she got you all handcuffed to a bed. You can't hardly get out. Unless you're strong like Goldsbury or Brock Lesnar, you can just tear the handcuffs. Are uh, you strong like Samson? <laughs> But she got you all chained up. She might go through getting flashbacks with a man abuser. And then she get all rageful and angry. That we know that uh, hell has no fury like a woman scorned. And now you can't even get out the chains because she got you chained up to a bed somewhere. And that demon take her over. She go, and now she turn into a she demon. You go, Jesus, help. And now she's scratching you up. Scratching your body up. Scratching your back up, she turned into a she beast. Shh. And then she want to take a knife. And now I want to stab you up. You better be careful with that. All that that's 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 demonic sex there. All that rough sex that can turn into something satanic. I'm serious. Demons can be involved in that. You got people up there hanging from a ceiling with a chain. Now that's not holy there. That's satanic. Oh, that's see that's. What Satan worshipers do when they make love. See, that's not God. That's not holy. See, when you're holy in marriage, then that's when God will bless. 
That's when the Bible said marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. In other words, what you do in your bed is your business between you and your wife. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So God has ordained love making for marriage. That's how we got here. Because our parents made love and they birthed us. As long you love Jesus. Oh my God, praise the Lord for the Prince of Peace. Do you not know that you can minister, that if your wife get depressed, or your husband get depressed, y'all can just make love? That will solve it right there because God has anointed you to make love with your husband. God has anointed you to make love with your wife. That's God put that there. You don't realize how valuable that is. That's why Satan is trying to fight against your love making life. You can have a hard day at work. You're feeling really sad. But your husband will come home giving you flowers and come out in nice shorts and nice muscles. He's in shape. And she coming out looking all nice. Hey, you looking nice. Wow, you smell it nice there, baby. She put that, he put that Barry White voice on you. Hey, that turns you on. Nothing wrong with that. Then you can read the Bible, and then you can make love. Then you make love, then you can read the Bible. Praise God. That's a wonderful thing, but there's a time and place for that. You do things in decency and in order. God wants you to be happy in marriage. God doesn't like to see divorce in marriages. The devil wants to divide marriages by causing domestic abuse and violence. And then when the children, when you watch your parents fighting back and forth like that, it affects the children. Now they own drugs or they join a gang. Because marriage is powerful, especially when it's ordained by God. Family is powerful. Spell the word family. I'm almost done. It's spelled F-A-M-I-L-Y. It's very simple. Child can spell that. There's a meaning to the word family. F stands for father. A stands for an. M stands for mother. I stands for is. L stands for loving. Y stands for you. That means family means father and mother is loving you. It's spelled family. See? So I simple that is to understand. Family. You're going to break generational curses right now in the name of Jesus over families right now. Not just only break the curse, we want God to destroy the curse of division in marriages. Praise God. Now, if you're meant to be a eunuch, then this don't apply to you. For those of you, uh, praise be the name of Jesus Christ, who want God to who want God to fix your marriage, who want God to give you children, Hannah didn't have children and she was bitter because her sister had children and she didn't have any children. And she cried to God for a child and God gave Hannah Samuel, the prophet Samuel. Many of y'all been trying to have children for years. I'm trying to find something right now. Praise God. Where is that? But I don't see it now. Praise God. Many of you have been having, trying to find You've been trying to have children for years. Many of you have five boys. Many of you women got five boys in your stomach. You've been trying to have children for years. It looks like you can't have it. God can give you children. God can give you an offspring. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. I believe God can do it. I'm going to pray against that witchcraft that was prayed over you by your mother or your grandmother or your grandfather or whoever was with the Masons or Eastern Stars and doing soul traveling and that curse had fell on the third and fourth generation. And that's why it's a curse of cancer in your family, or accidents, or heart attacks. Our children are dying at an early age. Uh, even Bruce Lee was wrestling with a curse in his family. Bruce Lee was a powerful martial artist. Okay, and it was not normal how Bruce Lee died at an early age in Brandon Lee. There was a wizard who worked witchcraft against the Lee family. And that curse followed. He worked witchcraft against the men in the family. And that's how that curse fell on Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee. The only one who can break that curse is Jesus Christ. As powerful as he was as a martial artist, he could not defeat that demon because you cannot defeat demon spirits with your natural power. The only one who can defeat demon spirits is the power of God. Now God got angels that can beat demons. But angels cannot destroy a demon. 
The only one who, the only one who can destroy a demon is God. Now, Michael the prince, who's an angel of war, the archangel, can defeat a demon because Michael was the one who put Lucifer out of heaven when he tried to take over heaven. God gave the power to Michael the prince, and Michael had angels with him who warred against Lucifer, who's called the dragon, and the angels that he deceived, praise God, who are called fallen angels, and they are called devils or evil spirits. Praise God. So we know angels can defeat demons because they got the power of God, but they cannot destroy a demon. The only one who can destroy demons is God because he's the almighty one. He's the immortal one. He's our creator. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ, the first and the last. Yeshua HaMessiah, become a believer. Praise God. He said, I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and the morning star. So Jesus Christ is the only one who would destroy the devil at the end of the world and the Antichrist. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless y'all. Thank you, Jesus. They was enjoying the word up in the Jeep. Because John said, and I saw death and hell cast in the lake of fire, according to Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. So we're going to pray that God will fix your marriages. We're going to pray that God will give you a happy marriage. God wants us to be happy in marriage. Marriage is a wonderful thing that has been ordained by God. That's why he uh, married Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The first wedding was in the Garden of Eden. God put Adam and Eve together and told them to be fruitful and multiply and they got an offspring. He blessed Abraham and Sarah with an offspring. Praise God. He gave him Isaac. That's another story at the age of 90-something years old and 100-something years old. So let's begin to pray the prayer of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, there's those who got fry boys. Deliver that young woman from fry boys in the name of Jesus. That she could have a baby. Destroy that generational curse in the name of Jesus. They've been worked up by witches and warlocks that don't want to see your son or daughter get married or have children. Get rid of that controlling spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, we speak blessings to the wounds, to our offsprings, to relationships and our relationships that that demon would no longer follow and cause division. Keep lesbians away from the wife. In the name of Jesus. So now there's a lot of dikes and bushes. I know around the area I was in, the area, me and Lady Basilla, there was some big giant bush, some big old giant dike. Like mad because we was together. And I know there was, a, there was a lot of women who was drawn to her and Lady Basilla definitely is not a lesbian. She's a real woman and a lady. I know there, there was a spirit that was trying to draw women to her to try to take her away from a man. She said, no, I don't like women. It might have been somebody in her past. Don't know who it is that might have prayed that up. That she won't be happy. That's why I had to rebuke generational curses. Or it might have been someone who might have spoke it up. You gotta watch who some of your friends are too. Some of your women friends you have, you think that's your best friend, is she a dyke? Even if she's married. She may have a husband, but liking women on the side. Especially when you're talking about, we're going to be friends for life. And right there, they're putting out a, a covenant in the spirit of work curse so that wherever you get involved with a man, that it won't work because they want you drawn to them. You got to break it. Many of you are going through that. Come on. Not just break it, but destroy it. Oh. You're meant to be married. You're meant to be happily married. You're meant, amen, to have a good wife and a good husband. So we erase word curses right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak blessings upon you. We speak blessings upon you. That you will have a happy marriage. That you have a happy life. That God will bless you and your children. That God will keep evil spirits away from you and send angels around you. God bless this man. Bless his whole life, God. Hallelujah. It's the goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. But repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the promise that God has for you and your what? Your children. See? But love God more than you love your wife. Love God more than you love your husband. And spend time together. Go out. Have a good time. You can still have a good time without being worthy. You can still have a good time with your husband and wife. 
people out doing the things of the world. Yes, we are called unto liberty, but we're not called unto liberty to the flesh, the Bible said. Apostle Paul said that. I believe it's in Galatians. Uh, let me get that scripture real quick. Uh, I like to get into the word and give scripture before I end. Hope you're enjoying this word, y'all. It is. Let's go into it. Apostle Paul said, We are called unto liberty, but not for the occasion of the flesh. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. It's Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. This is what the Bible said. I love this, what the Bible says. Thank you, Jesus. It said, This passage of Paul the Apostle, the epistle to Galatians, read as follow. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Jesus has set us free. I'm so glad Jesus sets you free. Hallelujah. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. See that? For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we're called unto liberty, but not unto the flesh. Also, in other words, you can still have fun and go out to Hawaii or go to the beach. You can go have fun. If you go to see a movie, see a decent movie, not a demonic movie. You can go out somewhere with your wife or your spouse or your fiance. You can drink some nice soda and we'll eat right. You don't want to eat the wrong foods. But go out and have fun. It's called date night. Our date day. <laughs> we spend time together. Praise God. You can still love the Lord and still have fun, but just keep it holy. Because God wants you to spend time with each other. The same thing with Jesus. When you love Jesus, you spend time together. When you love Jesus, you spend time in his word because you love him. When you love Jesus, then you're hungry for Jesus. You're thirsty for Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, they that hunger shall be fed. Praise God. When you're thirsty for him, he will give you, he will give you the living water, which is Jesus Christ. When you are in relationship with Jesus, mode. then you want to spend time with Jesus. Why? Because you love him. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. God bless you. God bless this church. And God bless the pastor of this church. And bless all the members of this church. And bless all the churches around here, God. And all the people in the houses. And most of all, we bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue be in our mouth. I thank you for those who sent to the cash app. Y'all such amazing givers. You enjoy this ministry. You want to sow to the ministry. People have sold the ministry have told me that God had blessed them with good paying jobs and could they sow into the right ministry. It's not falling on bad ground but good ground. If you want to sow to other people's ministries you can do that too. Along they are men and women of God. If you choose one to sow the Flame of Fire ministry, my cash app is Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warren Adams. Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warren Adams. W-A-R-R-E-N-A-D-A-M-S. Write to me, praise God, and let me know how much God has been blessing you and your children. Praise God. Lady Basilla has informed me what you have gave, and we want to say thank you, and God is going to even give you more for you giving. In every area of your life and most of all give your heart to Jesus Christ because he loves you I'm going to recommit myself back to God too I want God to do a restoration on me too Amen Don't forget we are meant to be happy in marriage God bless you We see you again